Our second keynote speaker, Melanie, is a chief executive officer and co-founder of Canva. Canva is the online design and publishing tool which makes graphic design simple for everyone. The platform features a simple drag and drop user interface and a vast range of templates ranging from presentations, social media tools, huge library of stock photographs, illustrations, fonts, and more. With Canva, anyone can take an idea and create something beautiful, including me. Canva is increasingly involved in supporting social change makers by providing tools and funds for social enterprises to better improve and protect their brands. Earlier in the year, the Canva team facilitated sessions on branding for the outgoing class of fellows, CEPA 2019-2020. Moderating the fireside chat with Melanie Perkins is Joseph Mojume. Joseph is a LEAP alumnus and currently studies at the Warwick Business School with a specialism on strategy. He has 16 cumulative years of sales experience in software, construction, equipment, machinery, real estate, tourism, technology, and more. Ladies and gentlemen, join me. Welcome Melanie Perkins and Joseph Mojo. An Australian proverb or a popular Australian joke, just to break the ice and not to put ah. you under pressure. You might want to do that at the end, but we'd like to hear either. Which would you go for? I'm happy to do it right now. So a, a very common saying in Australia is she'll be right. And it kind of means like you're going to just deal with things. Even if things are going terribly, you're going to make sure it works. She'll be right. Uh, it's just like, yeah, get, get on with the show, figure things out. Excellent. So we'll let a new one today. Everyone should be right. The challenge would always face us, but we'll be fine. Okay. So today is a fireside chat, so it's supposed to be a casual conversation, basically around the Social Innovators Program, which LEAP is running this year and the award ceremony, with a focus on how do we mobilize action uh, ahead of the SDG goals for 2030, which is 10 years away. And having you today, not on the hot seat, but the comfortable seat, we would like to hear from you, share your experiences, around your business life and your social life, around how we can learn. I now want to hand it over to you to give us a summary of your journey, the Canvas journey and where you are today. Yeah, sure. So years ago, I was at university and I was teaching design programs, so things like Photoshop and InDesign, and thought they were incredibly tricky to learn how to use and it would take a whole semester just to learn the very basics let alone how to actually create a great design and i thought that this seemed completely crazy and that in the future it was all going to be online and collaborative and a lot simpler um so that was sort of like this massive vision that we had all those years ago but at the same time i had no business experience no marketing experience software experience or any related experience whatsoever and so rather than trying to tackle the entire world of design decided to tackle school yearbooks in Australia did that for a number of years and then set our sights on the the bigger thing and in enabling everyone across the entire globe to design anything and it's been we launched six years ago now and um, it's been a, a long journey but it's been wonderful to see that that vision actually starting to turn into reality and you know we're used by so many people across the globe now which is pretty cool to see and it's wonderful seeing Canva empower small businesses and help them um you know really get up and running and people land jobs because they created a resume on Canva and um you know so many non-profits now using Canva as well which is just wonderful to see. That's a bit about the business let's start talk a bit about Melanie who are you what's your day like what 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 gives you the energy to go? That's a great question. So I I don't know, everyone is a complicated, <laughs> a complicated thing. Many, many parts make up, I think, a few things that really drive me. Um, I love solving problems and I always have since I was a little girl. <laughs> um, I always love setting my mind on challenging goals. And, you know, in the early days, those goals were a lot simpler um, than the goals that we're, ta we're tackling today. But I think that determination really is a muscle. And so if you can apply yourself to a little goal and then you can see yourself achieve that then you'll be more equipped to take on the next bigger goal um, and so I think you know wherever you are whatever you're doing in life being able to you know set your mind on a goal and then put in lots and lots of hard work to to achieve that goal um, sort of really helps to set you up for success later on um, you know I've always loved 
um, taking on lots and lots of different goals, you know, everything from when I was in high school, I used to love taking on extracurricular activities and yes. doing public speaking and debating and all sorts of different things <laughs> like that. Um, I used to figure skate growing up, bizarrely. Yeah. Um, but I think that each of those things sort of helped to equip me to realise that I could you know, put my mind to something and then achieve it eventually, even though, you know, sometimes it would take a long time. Excellent. I mean, now we're talking about... Um, the SDGs for 2030, and we've got 10 years to go. The theme of this event is about mobilizing collective action, and you have built a platform that works excellently around the topic of collaboration. You have broken the glass ceiling, you have defied space, your business has overcome time and location. If you could speak to us about the power of collaboration, what would be the core theme that we can take away from that word? Firstly, I think what you're doing is incredibly exciting and incredibly important for the whole world. Um, secondly, I think one of the things that we have done well is that you can't create a future that you haven't first envisaged, envisaged in your mind. And for us, one of the most important things has always been to dream in as much detail as we possibly can about the future that we want to then work incredibly hard to bring to reality. And while that might not sound like it's on the topic of collaboration, I think it is. Because when you have a group of people who have a really strong vision of what you're trying to create and are really dreaming together and have this vision that you're all striving to work towards, I think that's going to then motivate everyone's individual action towards that. But if you haven't had that you know, time to dream together, you haven't had that shared vision of what you're trying to create, then you're all going to be sort of rowing your boats in different directions. And so I think it's a really critical piece that sometimes gets overlooked is the power of dreaming and dreaming in as much detail as you possibly can about that future that you're wanting to create. Now, this program is focused on young innovators, particularly in Africa. And we know the challenges of Africa, we could read it day and night and not exhaust it. And rejection is a big part of the story of any innovator on the continent trying to make headway. Basically, how should young people manage rejections today? I want to share with you a visual metaphor that I use um, very often. So I often think about planting seeds um, and you have to plant a hundred seeds and then maybe one of them will grow. And if you apply that same metaphor to rejection, actually a seed not sprouting means that you've planted one more seed and then you know it means you're a little step closer to having that seed that may one day sprout. Yeah. And why, why I think that is so important is that if you think that you are going to plant one seed and that one seed is going to sprout a wonderful tree, yeah. then you're going to be definitely disappointed when that seed doesn't sprout. Mm -hmm. But it's so important to plant those seeds, water them all, and then hope one day one of those will sprout. So you might not be able to determine which of those seeds will sprout in time. But I think the fact that you are planting those seeds, that you are watering them, I think that's really critical. Mm -hmm. But then on the other side of it, I think it's so important to get to the point that you – believe so much that that is the future that will happen that one day is so important to happen um because you know i guess back to that same thing if you don't believe it no one else is going to if you can't see that future that you're wanting to will into reality and work incredibly hard for years if not decades um then it's going to be a lot harder to get anyone else to so it's really important that you're continuously thinking about that future that you're trying to will into its ex existence. It's certainly the same for you know, entrepreneurs of every different type. Um, that you know, that's really your job is to will into its ex existence um, a new reality. And so it's really important that you have a picture very clear in your mind of that reality. Excellent. Then moving on to the next question, which will be draws back from your history from fusion books into Canvas. Many of our young people in Africa who want to go into innovative solutions, many times think they can go it alone. Because the saying is, if you want to go fast, go alone. And usually the vision carrier is the one who sees the entire big picture and his or her pace is different from the pace of collaborators or partners. You run a business where you're in partnership with two other gentlemen. Um, you have successfully collaborated with big brands like FedEx and Office Depot. How does partnership work? And is it always a smooth journey? And what's the, the trade-off between going it alone and going it with others where sometimes friction might come into play? So firstly, nothing is smooth ever at any point in time, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint. <laughs> and in fact, the, the challenges only get bigger as a company gets bigger. Yeah. Um, but I think... The way I've always thought about it is I do absolutely everything that I can do to the best of my ability 
as much as I can do. And then I need to find other people that can help on the other parts that they can help um, on. But what's really important there is that you like, so for example, the part that I do pretty well is the vision part and the, you know, helping to figure out how the pieces connect together. Um, And, you know, I learned a lot of skills early on around, you know, being able to take an idea and turn that into product mock-ups and to make that really simple. And so I'd spend a lot of time um, really refining that as much as I can. And I think that rather than being like, okay, hey, do you want to collaborate with me? and you're not bringing much to the table. Mm-hmm. I think it's really important to like bring as much as you possibly can to the table, like push it as far as you possibly can, do as much as you possibly can. At one stage, I was like, I'm going to have to learn coding because I'm not going to be able to find an engineer to, to work <laughs> with me on this. And so I think that you know that's the constant thing is, I, I guess it relates to the planting seeds, plant as many seeds as you can, act like you're going to go along, alone, but try and, you know, bring in people to collaborate, but don't kind of think that you can just be like, oh, hey, can you collaborate? Meaning, can you do all the work? Like do as absolutely much as you possibly can and then find the best people that believe in that same vision. Um, But I think that, yeah, collaboration is critical, but it's also important to do as much as you can because then it means that you're bringing more to that collaboration rather than thinking someone else can do the work for you. Fantastic. Now to the big organisations where you sit, um, as a CEO, and your platform has created, as you said, 60,000 free access to social enterprise and social businesses. And the world is changing. There's a lot of social talk around the environment, equality, girls' rights. By the way, good job on all the things you do for the coding girls in Australia. That's fantastic. I have a bias towards that, and I think you're on the right path. Kudos on that. But coming back to the topic, what is the role of corporate beyond lip singing beyond ticking a box on corporate social responsibility where is the future of corporate organization in supporting real innovative solutions in our world today that is a great question and i think something you know the old adage that don't be evil is sort of completely not not insufficient in today's day and age everyone expects companies to be stepping up to be a force for good you know it's one of our company values but i think that it's not just something to it, every single person in our company is so much more inspired and so much more motivated by being able to create a company that is doing good things in the world, that is supporting our 60,000 nonprofits, that is helping people to achieve their goals. And I think in this day and age, people have that expectation of their employer. They have that expectation of the products that they're buying, of the brands that they're supporting. And I think that that's going to happen just more and more as we go into the future, is that there is a, a higher expectation of companies to be good corporate citizens to be helping to create the world that we all want to live in Um, and I think that that is it's exciting to see the transition and that happening more and more today but I think that's going to be happening more and more into the future that people care about the world that we live in they care about the you know the impact that they're having both from their employers and the brands that they're supporting so I think it's becoming a base level expectation um, on on both regards but I guess as a human I want to be creating a company that I'm proud to work at, I'm proud to work with, and um, to leave the world a little better than we found it. So I think it's utterly critical that we are playing it and having an impact. Something that we're part of, the 1% pledge, where you pledge 1% of your um, time, resources, profit or revenue um, and product is something that really inspires our team. And it means that we can all have a very um, structured way of helping to contribute to the world. But I guess on the other side of that, those that other 99% that we are as a company, we want to be doing the most good we possibly can with that 99% as well. And so things like sustainability for the print product that we offer, um, ensuring that the product is having a positive impact on the world. The 50 odd thousand schools that are on Canva, we want those kids to be able to have a quality education through the product that they were, we're creating. So I think both the 1% and the 99% are critical to be a force for good as well um, and to do the most good we possibly can in this world. Excellent. Speaking about a force for good, when is Canva education going global beyond Australian borders? Oh, so we're already in, I'd say most countries, where Canva's used in 190 three countries I believe (laughs) pretty much every country a bar there's just a couple that we aren't in um and I think you know it's 
our very strong focus on ensuring we have a very widely used localized product has been something um, that we've believed in right from the start. We want to empower the whole world to design, which means you know everyone in every language. So we're in a hundred languages now, um, and we are continually continuously investing in that localized experience to ensure that everyone across the world can design, not just people in you know a few select countries. Um, and that's you know something that we believe really strongly in. And so you know, with our education product, we're in fifty thousand schools and they're very much dispersed across the globe and we're investing really heavily in in that education product because we want to ensure that everyone has a great experience and is able to access great materials um, and is able to really explore their creativity wherever they are in the world it's yeah being one of the core tenets of canva was that we believe that design should be every for everyone and so we want to ensure that our product is affordable meaning free <laughs> in for a lot of people that it's completely you know we have a very valuable free product and that's something we're going to continuously invest in and then at the same time our paid product is has been designed to be as affordable as we possibly can and we just jam pack as much value in there so <laughs> everyone around the world can afford that too there's an interesting story of how you take your customers from freemium to premium but that's a different topic for another day. But today I also then want to come back to young social innovators trying to make a solution in the world. Sometimes the product might be global, but you require local peculiarities. Like for example, the hundred languages you're doing. For innovators in Africa who, are, who come from Morocco down to South Africa, from Ethiopia to Egypt, how do you look out for local peculiarities in the final product? What are the, what are the signposts that you need to look out for to make sure that your products are applicable in various markets as a social product, I mean. Yeah, I think one of the most important things, and it sounds very basic, and I guess it is, but it's also really critical, is to solve a problem for real people. And, and I think that that really applies on both a local lens, on a global lens, and it's, you know something else I believe very much in is starting niche and then going wide. And so if you can find a few people that you're really helping to solve a problem for, and it very directly helps them, then that you know, can then eventually go wide. But I think that sometimes you see the, the inverse of that problem is that people start going wide, kind of serves no one very well, and then you know it's not a very good foundation. But if you can serve a few people really well they love your product so much or they love the you know whatever it is that you're doing so much you're serving them their needs really well then that's always going to be a stronger foundation to um then leap leap from <laughs> all right since you mentioned the word leap let me mention the word canvas point intended <laughs> imagine a blank canvas what is the future you are going to draw on that canvas for canvas in the next 10 years what keeps you up at night what is that 10-year plan today Oh, that's a good question. I'll give, I'll give a couple of different aspects to that. So I guess our two-step plan is to build one of the world's most valuable companies and to do the most good we can do. Yeah. Um, we really want to you know, genuinely do as much as we possibly can to help help schools and nonprofits and to sort of leave, level the playing field. Um, and I think we have such an incredibly, you know, wonderful opportunity to be able to do that we've got 40 million people using canva every day and if we can help them to achieve their goals or every week every month sorry unfortunately not every day just yet <laughs> uh, you know if we can help those people to achieve their goals their small businesses their, those non-profits and i think that's incredibly powerful we really want to enable people to take their idea and seamlessly turn that into a design and remove friction between those two points and you know we've made some strides in that direction but there is a hell of a lot more to do there yet um and then you know i mentioned before our two-step plan of building one of the world's most valuable companies and doing the most good we can do but you know making little strides in step one but we have so much more to do on step two mm -hmm. so if we can do that over the next 10 years i would be very satisfied uh, with that excellent now um canva like many other top businesses have faced challenges in recent times i mean i guess you're working remotely the world has changed but for a couple of businesses and yours in particular you've seen an upside of it you've seen people pivoting towards collaborative workspaces you have grown 25 million users under one year. What is the uniqueness that every company needs to think about, including social innovators, with regards to the changing times that we are in? That's a good question. I think one of the most important things is just back to solving a problem. So actually, when COVID hit, 
the world changed and the problems everyone was addressing changed as well. So all of a sudden the students that we were helping to um, you know, share their creativity in the classroom, the classroom changed. The classroom was often at home and dispersed. Um, and so we invested very heavily to ensure that we had a great product for those students, regardless of where it was that they were learning from. The same with nonprofits. We doubled down on ensuring that our nonprofit program was available to public health organisations and made that process as seamless as we possibly could to ensure that when it's people were trying to spread accurate information about COVID and about COVID prevention, we were there and able to support them through that process as well. Small businesses all of a sudden had to pivot online. And whereas Previously, they were designing things like business cards and marketing materials that were then printed. Um, often, as the world changed and moved online, they were having to figure out how to navigate that transition online. And so we spent a lot of time and effort ensuring that we were providing the right materials, the right templates, the right um, the right things that they needed at that point in time and really solving that problem. And I think that helping to solve the problems that companies and businesses and students and public health organisations were facing as they transitioned online helped mean that not only were we solving the problems for those people, but then they were spreading it to other nonprofits and public health organisations as well, which certainly helped to fuel Canva's growth, but also helped to solve a problem um, that was very widespread. And so I guess it's really just back to, again, solving a problem wherever you can, whatever the circumstances of the world is, um, solving a problem as well as you possibly can um, is utterly critical, uh, it, regardless of what it is that you're doing, I think. Excellent. I mean, one last question for me would be, we've got 10 years to 2030. The, the development goals will not expire, but we hope to be fulfilled in 10 years. COVID has set us back a few years. It has tripled the challenge we have. Uh, and, and then there is also the point of leadership. Are we still in a one global race or we have leaders who are going on an individualistic journey, thinking about themselves alone? So it's a bit more complex than when these goals were originally designed. From your point of view, what is the call to action? What do we need to do to realign ourselves to those goals 10 years from today? I think one of the most important things to do is whatever you possibly can that moves us in the direction that we want to be moving. And I think why that is so important is you might not be able to single-handedly solve all of the SDGs, but if you can do one thing that moves you know, your community, your, you know, your, your family, whatever it is that you can do, your team, your company, in the, the direction of those SDGs, we'll all be working towards that common future that is so important. And so, you know, one physical step is so much more important than lots of shallow words. Yeah. And so the more that you do, you know, with whatever it is that you have to move in that direction, I think is really worthwhile. You know, and the more people that you can bring along for the ride and the bigger impact that you can have, obviously the better. But I think that any step that you can make in that direction is so important. And, you know, if it is employing a few people around you, if it is, you're building a product that helps to move towards the SDGs, if it is helping to influence a larger company, you know, whatever it is, any any tangible step in the right direction is a step in the right direction. You can only do the best that you can do with the, with what you have around you. And I think that, um, you know, that that is not only the best you can do, um, but that's, that's the critical things that you have to play with. Excellent. I want to thank you for your time on behalf of Leap Africa and everyone involved. It's been a fantastic conversation. Wish we could have this face to face, but it's the world we live in. Um, you said something about the Australian world, which is come again, just to repeat again what you said at the beginning. She'll be right. <laughs> <laughs>